but the Lakers haven't made an official injury announcement yet. Uh, Darvin Ham talked about it on Sunday. Um, my feel is that this is an injury where they're evaluating several different options on what to do, but suffice to say, he's not going to be out a game or two. He's going to be out an extended period. And hopefully it's an injury that he can, you know, get some, get some treatment on and, and get it healed. Um, you know, it's not good. It's not a sprained ankle. It's not a sprained foot from what I understand. It's something a little bit more concerning than that. So um, the Lakers had really caught some traction here, Pelton. I went to, to LA this week. I, I was there. I talked to some of their folks. I watched them play. When I left LA on Friday, I was thinking, you know, within a few days here, the Lakers could be ahead of the Warriors in the standings. And I, you know, they had sort of found a formula that was keeping them in games. Uh, Their three-point shooting had gotten better. Um, They had gotten healthier. Uh, Russell Westbrook moving to the bench had been more helpful than when he was in the starting lineup. He still has his moments either way, but um, he wasn't hurting them as badly and in some cases was helping them. And Anthony Davis was playing, you know, first-team NBA, all-NBA level Uh, basketball and even LeBron who um, you know to put this diplomatically LeBron's activity level and intensity level defensively tends to come and go based on I shouldn't say this it tends to come and go I speculate that it sometimes depends on his faith in the in what the team can do and it looks like LeBron in recent games has been hugely invested now they have a game tonight as we're about – they're tipping off right about as we're recording this, so I don't know what will happen in this game. But, Kevin, what is your initial feeling? Let's say that it's a month without Anthony Davis. What do you think the Lakers are looking at in a guy who was going to be an absolute clear-cut uh, all-star now being sidelined uh, yet again in his career? Yeah, and maybe even more than that so far this season. You guys talked about the Bon Temp straw poll on Friday. I was one of the voters who had Anthony Davis on my ballot. He got my fifth place MVP vote based on how he's performed this season, despite the Lakers record being what it is. So that's that's obviously going to be very difficult to replace. I mean, Thomas Bryant gave them some great minutes in the second half of that win on Friday night against the Nuggets, but uh counting on him to play at that level, you know, over an extended absence is not fair, I think, to Thomas Bryant. <laughs> Or, or to the I Lakers. Agree. <laughs> I agree. Yes. Yeah. And look, I mean, as much as the Lakers had sort of elevated what their upside looked like, the way that they've played lately, and even in that loss to the Celtics that they had in overtime on Tuesday, you know, still, I think was an impressive performance, all things considered, and, you know, obviously beating the Nuggets. But they didn't have a lot of margin for error in the first place when you're starting out at 12 and 16. And when you then lose Anthony Davis for a month and like, realistically, is that going to be the last major injury the Lakers suffer this season? Probably not. So that's, that's where I think it all kind of starts to stack up against them. Yeah. I mean, so they started very well known two and 10 um, and they were 10 and uh, coming into this game tonight. 10 and six cents um, having played a pretty challenging schedule. Um, this last eight games they had a six game road trip where Anthony Davis missed two games. They went three and three. Then they split games this week with the Celtics and nuggets at home, which, you know, was really good um, to, to, to do that, to, to go four and four in that eight game stretch. You know, I, I thought it, it acquitted them well. It actually, you know, as I was looking around, I was kind of, thinking you know what like maybe maybe it could happen um and uh you know and i say maybe it could happen maybe maybe they could you know make the play in um and heck you know under certain circumstances maybe even crawl into that six depending on what trade they're able to make i felt as as optimistic about i've been up with the lakers really in a long time and i was and, and you could feel in los angeles there was a lot of um respect for Darvin Ham. I mean, there still is about what he's been able to do with this team. The, the team is, is, uh, you know, significantly flawed. We've gone over that. Um, he's been ridden pretty hard for maybe sticking with certain lineups for too long, but he just doesn't have a, um, he doesn't have a long list of players that he trusts 
in my view, based on his actions. I don't think he's got a long list of players that he trusts, and that's just a part of the roster. I mean, I thought, that, got, I thought that second yeah. half against the Celtics was very telling, that they basically yeah. stuck with the same guys, and I think it eventually yeah. caught up to them in overtime. Yeah, he um, he played to, to win a regulation. He went to overtime, and it didn't work. Um, but I... I, I kind of, you know, got myself to the point where I, I said, okay, like maybe they can happen. And I, you know, in talking to folks around the Lakers, you know, of course they're very interested in various trade talks. Um, I think there was, you know, a feel that there wasn't a lot of players available at this point, which is not stunning. You know, there's a lot of teams still in the mix and it's early in the trade season window here. Um, but that, uh, there was going to, you know, there was significant interest, uh, and there maybe still is, but the problem that they're now looking at is they have a really tough rest of this month. Um, they're in Washington tonight. Washington has lost nine straight games. Um, I don't know what will happen. The game really just tipped off. Um, if Washington doesn't win this game, I, we'll be talking about Washington on Wednesday. Um, but uh, they have this little road trip here. They come home for a game and then they have a, another five game road trip where they go back out East. They sort of have um, um, just th their schedule this month is really, really un unfriendly. I, I, you know, there was a, there was a, in November, there was this time where they got like four or five days off in a row. And I actually saw some people grumbling, like how do the Lakers get to have four or five days off? Everything goes their way. And, you know, I've heard some people complain that just because of TV and, and um, I'm sorry, the, the game, the game is in Washington. I'm sorry. is in LA tonight. I don't know why I said the game was in uh, Washington. I saw the wizards people in LA this week. Um, they go on the road uh, tomorrow to the Suns and then the Kings, but um, uh, sorry, I totally lost my train of thought there. Um, but their schedule, you know, th th they had to be gone on, on Thanksgiving, Christmas and new year's this year. And they have this trip where they, you know, go through Dallas on Christmas Day. So Pelton, like now I don't know where they're going to be at the end of the uh, at the end of this month. And, you know, they're going to take some losses without Anthony Davis. And I go back to wondering, you know, where their motivation is going to be on the trade market. It's it's very hard for them to convince themselves to take up cap space next year or use those two first round picks that they have. So the, you know, the two type of trades that they sort of have at their disposal, one is to use Westbrook and the picks for a star player. Um, you know, one or both of the picks for a star player, somebody who gets a big salary. Um, and that's the kind of trade they're looking for, but you know, there's not a lot of stars potentially available. And you have to really weigh whether a player who might be available is worth potentially mortgaging what you've left with, with what you've got on this roster. Then there's the, the, the second trade. This is the trade they've been more trying to do recently is looking at taking Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Nunn, both of whom are on the last year of their contracts and flipping them for a player who can help them more immediately, more uh, likely a shooter or somebody with size. And that type of trade, it doesn't necessarily guarantee they'd bring back somebody with money on his contract, but it's probable that they would trade for a guy who would have money left on his contract. And if they did that, that would spoil their option to use all the Westbrook cap space this summer. They would, it would choke that off. So they've got to, they've got to sit there and choose between closing cap space or giving away the draft picks. And they're only going to do that, I think, if they really believe that this year's team can get something real done. And that's really been the, where they've been at since October. And I do think they were moving in that direction. They were, they were being convinced that this team could get something done, and they were starting to move in that path. And now I wonder, Pelton, if he is facing a month or longer, whether or not they ever get themselves there and they just take it on the chin this season. It's not a decision that gets made today, but it certainly is going to have them putting the brakes on. Uh, I would suspect um, any, you know, try to look at a significant move right now. 
Well, I think it's not a move that gets made today is the important thing there, because as much as we talk about December 15th as the start of trade season, because it's when so many additional players become trade eligible and it becomes a lot easier to make trades, is our colleague Bobby Marks loves to point out, there are very, very rarely actually trades consummated in the month of December. And, you know, certainly not very often, uh, as he pointed out, you know, the last one was the one that his Nets made with Terrence, with Houston involving Terrence Williams many years ago. That was the last one that was actually on December 15th. And part of the reason for that is you just know so much more about where your team is going on January 15th than you do on December 15th. And even more a couple of weeks after that, when we actually hit the trade deadline. So, you know, I think there was a lot of talk about the possibility that that smaller move involving Beverly and or none could be something that the Lakers could do more, you know, more quickly while leaving the Westbrook option is something possibly down the road. And I think that it affects the chances of that because yeah, to your point, if you're scraping just to make the play in tournament, then that's not worth throwing away. Certainly either the two first round picks that you can trade. That's been my position from the start. Like when you're in a hole like this, stop digging is the first thing you do. They do have a lot of second round picks. I hadn't realized I just looked this up, but they have Chicago's second round pick this year, which uh, might might be more valuable than it seemed when they, when they got that one. That's a very fair point. Uh, Chicago is our going to be our next our gonna topic in a little bit. I don't know if we'll our next one, but um, yes, um, you know the thing is, you know, the, the, some of the teams around them are also having difficulty you know you're you're looking you know Steph is out so they're going to take some the Warriors are going to take some losses although they they got to win in Toronto who is one of the teams that is going the wrong direction Toronto has lost five in a row and has slipped to 10th in the Eastern Conference even though they got healthy as just a quick aside they finally got healthy and they've lost eight out of ten and now there's folks saying maybe the Raptors, you know, uh, maybe the Raptors should um, consider getting into the Wembenyama sweepstakes. It's uh, that's the way it's going in Toronto. But um, you know, if you're if you're you know the Lakers coming into this weekend, you're saying, well, heck, the Warriors are the team right in front of us. We're only a game and a half back of them, or I think they were, you know, two maybe uh, they're tied in the loss column right now. So. Um, you know, depending on how things go tonight, they could have, um, they could have passed them and, you know, the Timberwolves are in front of them. The Timberwolves are no great shakes and not playing really well right now. And the, and that's, that's 10th place right there. Like you could convince yourself that you could, you know, continue to keep your head at 500 and get through this tough portion of the schedule because the teams are, you know, right in front of you are also dealing with injury problems. And, and now you've got your own injury problem just as bad. So, um, it's it's really a tough hand for the Lakers, and I guess if you were being cynical, you would say, well, you if you have Anthony Davis and you <clears throat> and you put your <clears throat> all your eggs in the Anthony Davis basket, you're gonna be disappointed because um, he's gonna get injured. But this was another injury that it didn't seem like a high trauma injury, Pelton, unless there was something else brewing there that we didn't know about. It just looked like he landed oddly on the foot. Um, it's um, it, it's, it's got to be frustrating for them. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.